Hello there guys, welcome back to Unis Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, you're only getting the one upload today, I know, normally it's two, but there is no Africa Cup of Nations up until the 23rd, so we've still got a couple of days until the last 16 kicks off, so up until then, it's going to be single upload, today one video, tomorrow though, I am going to be giving you my preview, two Chelsea versus Tottenham. Make sure you guys tune in to hear what I have to say in terms of how I think Chelsea should be lining that up, how Chelsea should approach it. Are Chelsea going to beat Tottenham or are we going to get something else? I will get into detail tomorrow in my preview, so make sure you catch that then tomorrow. Anyway, let's get into... I had to feel... Well, I saw this story and I thought, I have to speak about this. It's a non-Chelsea related story. This is Eunice Talks Football after all. Sometimes when things happen outside the Chelsea Football Club, I give you my perspective on it. And this is something that I, I have to talk about. I have to. Thomas Partey. Thomas Partey's had a very bad week. I mean, if there's one person that I think I can look at and go, you've had a worse week than me, um, it's probably Thomas Partey. <laughs> because I've had a dreadful week, yeah? I've had Chelsea completely stuff things up. Uh, they're playing like they don't know how to score anymore. Um, you know, the way that we lost against City, the way we drew against Brighton. And then I see Algeria get knocked out in the way they did of the AFCON. And now we've got to play Tottenham. And it's just like, oh, I've, I've had a bad week. I've had a very bad week. But Thomas Partey has probably had a worse week than me. He was away at the AFCON. Ghana got eliminated in pretty much the same sort of fashion as Algeria did. He hasn't had a good tournament at all. He flies back immediately, heads straight to Arsenal versus Liverpool, ends up on the bench, comes off the bench, for about 15 minutes, gets a yellow card, gets a second yellow card, is sent off and Arsenal are kicked out of the semi-final of the Carabao Cup and will not be playing a domestic final this season. So he's had a dreadful 48 hours, <laughs> a shocking 48 hours, Thomas Partey. But he's done something today that I, I look at and I go, why? Why, why, why? And he's not the first player to do it. This season, we have seen countless amount of footballers come on social media to give their view on something which pretty much they just don't need to speak about, as far as I'm concerned. Thomas Partey has released a statement. Why? Because he got sent off last night. Oh, didums. Didums. He got sent off. He felt he needed to make a statement. Let's read the statement and then I will give you exactly what I feel about this straight to you. So without further ado, he went on to Instagram and on his story, he put this. So he's put it on his story in an essay form. I'm going to show you this, which is released by David Ornstein. It's got a template of exactly what Thomas Partey has released with his own watermark on the flipping letter. He's released a letter, basically, signed, sealed and delivered, dated with his signature on it and all sorts. Thomas Partey has released a statement, same as his Instagram post, following a red card for Arsenal in last night's Carabao Cup semi-final defeat by Liverpool, which followed elimination from AFCON 2021 with Ghana and immediate AFC involvement after landing back in the UK. This is David Ornstein working for The Athletic, who are very well connected. Let's check this statement out. So it reads, after yesterday's events. I would like to say I am responsible for anything that happened and will take all the critiques. I should be more intelligent not to get in a challenge already booked, but my passion for this team and my personality make me want to fight for every ball. I love this club and my country even though things sometimes don't happen how the way I expected, but the only way to make things right is to keep working harder. I came back with the mentality to make myself available for team to get to the final Final, but it did not happen as planned. I will continue to give my all when I'm on the field of play because this is my life and this is what I chose to do. I am not happy with all that happened yesterday and at the AFCON, but I understand there is only one way to change things and that is hard work, effort and dedication and that is what I will continue to do. Signed, Thomas T.A. or Tay Parte. That was his statement, ladies and gentlemen. And look, Everything he said, right? Spot on. Okay, I've got nothing with I've got nothing against what he said. Right? Everything he said is the right mentality. What I have against is him feeling he needs to make this post. 
Why is it footballers now feel like they need to try and appease the crowd? This is the one thing that I don't understand. Could you imagine Roy Keane back in the day coming out with a statement after a red card? There's, there's just no need. So, All right, so you got sent off. So fans are critiquing you. Of course they are. This is the game you signed up for, mate. This is football. You're going to get fans that are going to critique you even if you play well. You're going to get some fans that are going to critique you. And yesterday, adding on to the circumstances of what happened with Ghana, he came back frustrated, he's played frustrated, he felt like he needed to make some challenges, he did, he paid the price for it, he got sent off. That doesn't mean you need to come out and release a statement with, oh my god, I got sent off so I need to explain my actions. I mean, if that's the case, then footballers would be making statements every week. There's that, Look, there's no need to do it. There's no need. And this is the thing that I want to drill in. Fans are going to critique when they feel like they need to. That's the whole point of being a football fan. We are fickle when it comes to that sort of thing. Let's be honest. All of us, me included. So we are, Football is based on emotion. When things happen, we react. That's why some fans are reactionary, right? Some fans are reactionary and then apply logic and rational thinking later on. And some fans try to suppress their emotions and just try to think rationally and they wait before saying anything. They give it a bit of time so then they can think rationally. Everyone has their cup of tea, right? That's the beautiful thing of football. You have people with various emotions and various ways of thinking, all supporting the same club and they just want to see their club do well. It's as simple as that. So when a player gets sent off, of course, immediately, you're going to get people that are going, what the hell was he doing? What was he doing? But that doesn't mean you as a footballer feel like you need to try and appease the crowd and come up with a statement like this. Let's be honest. And this applies to anyone that works in a public eye, right? Anyone, including people like me that are on YouTube, for example. This goes to anyone that is in the public eye. You cannot please everyone. You can't. And especially if you're playing for a top club like Arsenal Football Club in the Premier League, known as the best league in the world, with all eyes from across the world watching, you are not going to get everyone to see it in the same way as you. You're just not. It's impossible. Forget it. So you're going to get criticism. The one thing about playing at the highest level is you need to have the mentality to deal with criticism. And the best way to do that is to not talk, but to prove it with action. And if you get a red card, you don't need to say anything. But when the next time you play, you come back stronger and you try to prove a point to yourself and to everyone else that you are good enough and you are going to make it into this team and you're going to rectify the mistake that you made. We're all not perfect. We all make mistakes. He got sent off. He got sent off. Big deal. <laughs> big deal but there is this thing now and it's throughout the society that we're living in now this is mad I, I i look back to how it was 15 20 years ago and then i look at it now and i'm like what happened what happened and you know what i'll tell you what happened social media happened that's what happened the the, 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 the the need for everyone to get everything now 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 i need it now i need it now life has become too easy People have become ultra sensitive and people have become ultra offended. So when something like this happens and Thomas Partey ends up with a red card after coming on for like, what, 10, 15 minutes, he feels the need to make a statement because he feels like, oh, everyone's going to hate him. No, see it through. See it through. You are a professional footballer. See it through. You've been sent off. You can't go back and change that mistake. Now it's gone. But what you can do is do exactly as you said and apply that work and that dedication and that thought process of I'm going to come back better, I am going to prove to myself that I have it in me and I'm going to do the best for this team the next time that I come back after my suspension. That is all you can do. But then th there's this need and he's not the only one. There have been a couple of statements this, this, this season, even last season. Someone gets sent off and they feel like, oh, I need to come out and explain my actions. No, you don't. You don't. Everyone saw what happened. You got sent off. You deal with the consequence. You get suspended. When you come back, I want to see you on your best game, mate. Simple as that. But this mentality amongst footballers, it, it comes across now as weak. It comes across as weak. This statement comes across as someone who has been affected mentally, who looks at every, all the criticism on social media because he's definitely not hearing it to his face unless if he heard it when he was walking off the pitch from some of the fans. But as I said, some fans are going to be emotional, especially in the stadium. They're going to be emotional. 
especially after having paid with their ticket and their money, right? They're going to be emotional. That's standard. And it's always been like that. But to feel the need to make a public statement because you got sent off, there is absolutely no need. And as I said, it comes across as weak because this could make things worse. And this is what I want to stress to people. Don't try to appease the crowd. Do not try to please everyone. It's impossible. I learned that the hard way at one point. You cannot please everyone. You can't. No matter what you do, you're going to get some people that are going to disagree with you. Even if you've put in a 10 out of 10 performance, you are going to get some people, a small portion, that are going to say, nah, nah, he's rubbish, get out of here, that bloody blah, hate him, he doesn't know what he's doing, he's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. You're going to get that. That's part of the game. It's as simple as that. And that's part of the society we live in. You cannot please everyone. But this, making a statement like this and then talking with the words that he's mentioned, right? If he comes back and he puts in a stinker, People are going to look at this and go, Poof, that was your statement. You didn't mean a word of it. It could make it worse. What you need to do after putting in a performance where you get sent off in the manner that he did is keep them, soak in that critique, look at what people are saying, deal with it like a professional, go back to the training ground, work hard and prove to yourself and come back stronger and make a statement with your actions on the pitch. Simple. That is all you can do. Actions speak louder than words. And feeling the need to make a statement after something like that for me it is is just it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, and um, it's pointless for me. I see it as pointless. I see it as it comes across as weak. And to be a top player in the game, especially in a league like the Premier League, you need to be strong, man. You need to be strong. You need to be strong. And when I look back to how footballers were compared to how I see footballers now as a whole. I see mentalities getting weaker, man. They're getting weaker. They're getting weaker. It's it's shocking. Can you, as I've said, the, the example that I put out with Roy Keane earlier on, can you imagine Roy Keane coming out and writing a statement like this back in the day? Can you imagine going into a stadium, for example, because social media didn't exist. So, you you know, he has two choices. He either comes in front of a camera and makes a statement and says, I apologise for getting sent off, right? Um, I need to come back and work harder and come back and be stronger and um, apply my dedication on the training ground and um, I will do my best. C can you imagine Roy Keane, for example, anyone back in the day coming out after a red card saying that to a camera? Or in a programme notes to the stadium where, someone, where people go to games and they buy the programme notes for the game there's one page with an apology from Roy Keane for example at Old Trafford going I apologize for for getting sent off uh, that's my responsibility I need to come back and be stronger I need to put in my dedication on the training ground and work hard I mean, I mean no, no there's no need there's no need there's no need there's absolutely no need and look I'm surprised by Thomas Partey especially him being Ghanaian you know there's a thing with especially as I, I, I know with African mentality you're normally solid up here you're solid you're solid you're solid B being weak up here it doesn't it doesn't fly in Africa it doesn't cut you're not allowed <laughs> you're not allowed <laughs> right that's built into you from a young age it's built into you it surprised me when I saw that but he's not the only one can you imagine if Xhaka came out and started making statements bloody hell he'd, he'd run out of space on his hard drive that's how many statements he'd have to flip and make I mean look it's pointless what I do want to say is to fans when you react as a football fan you react that's your opinion and that's your right you can think whatever you want to think and no one can tell you otherwise right it's as simple as that and when footballers at the highest level are dealing with fans of that magnitude hey you're at the highest level for a reason. You're going to have to soak it in and prove to people on the pitch why they need to change their minds. That's the only way. Put in the performances and you get good feedback. That's it. So, yeah, this statement shocked me and I thought I'd speak on it because um, I don't want to see mentalities of top-end footballers sink like this to this sort of level. No, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Unless, this, look, the only time you put out a statement is if you've done something catastrophic. You've done, some, you've done something which is criminal, yeah? You know, Xhaka, just to speak on Arsenal, when Xhaka swore to the fans and threw his armband on the floor whilst he was getting subbed off, that's where he should have made a statement. Yeah, you make a statement with an apology, begging for forgiveness from all of the fans for doing something like that. At Arsenal, he got rewarded by becoming captain again and being in the starting lineup every week. I mean, and getting a new contract after he was meant to be going to Roma. It's a shambles. <laughs> it's a shambles. So look, that you do something criminal, okay. You make a statement if you mean it. If you mean it. Lukaku done what he done at Chelsea. 
He made a public apology on camera. As PR as it looked, he had to make that public apology because he knew it was getting crazy. After a red card, though, come on, it's a red card. You deal with it. You get suspended. You come back. You play on. It's not the end of the world. Um, so, look, it's ridiculous. I thought I'd give my two cents on it. Let me know what you think. Do you think people are getting too sensitive? Do you think footballers are starting to get too sensitive, uh, too scared, too fearful of the public backlash when they should be dealing with it? Or do you see it from another perspective? I'd love to hear your opinions in the comment section below. Thank you all so much. Tomorrow, as I've said, Chelsea Tottenham preview. Um, make sure you are here for that. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button if you've enjoyed this. It helps me out a lot. So thank you very much. And I'll see all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. See you then. Take care and peace.